Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Human Human Architecture, broadcasting live here from our exotic tropical paradise of Honolulu, Hawaii. And today's show is, as promised, a follow-up on the trilogy of uh, the three shows about the architecture of Hugh H. Manoa with the Solo Brown. And in the last show that we call The Fall and Potential Re-Rise, we're promising to do a follow-up on what we call the exceptions of uh, the rule of unfortunately not so good things having been built ever since the 70s. And that great exception to the rule is our today's guest, John Hara. Welcome, John. Thank you. And his daughter and partner, business partner, Mayumi Dao. So Hello. hi, Mayumi. How are you? <laughs> Thank you for being here with us. And let's jump right in and show the uh, slide number one, which is me snapping a picture of you guys in your office here, which we can see that you guys are old school, which I call also new school, <laughs> which because I encourage my emerging generation to be heavy on physical model making. And here are the models, and we want to jump in. Uh, we want to show the three projects that we identified a little bit more in depth, and they're actually from the late 70s and the 80s and of the very early 90s. So let's start in the 70s. Uh, slide number two, please, which is exactly 77. And John, explain a little bit to us what we see. Yeah, well, what we're looking at now uh, is a diagram of the East West Center. Uh, at the bottom is Holmes Hall, designed by Skidder, Owens, and Merrill. And at the upper side of the East West Center building is designed by I.M. Pei. The building we designed is right opposite of Holmes Hall, and it's on access of Dole Avenue, which is indicated by, by that line going into the building. Uh, this also shows the relationship of what we were doing, Burns Hall, to the other buildings on campus at the top of the um, at the top of the drawing is the, um, what was then called the biomedical building. Uh, so, so By Edward Durrell Stone. Right? Yeah, by, by mm -hmm. Edward Stone, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And we're saying this is something that hardly anyone does these days anymore, this sort of figure ground calibrating of mm -hmm. axes and of relationships and configurations. So that's that's very classy. and. Based upon that, you went a step further, and if you go to the next slide, please, uh, also did physical model modeling and, and studies about spaces and places, right? Mm -hmm. So here you can see that relationship again between the SOM engineering school to the left and the gateway dorm at the very bottom, which we also did a show about, and then as you indicated, the Hall and Manoa up there as part of the East West Center which you told me this interesting anecdote about, actually let's go back one decade earlier, about the mid 60s and you at Penn, please share that part. Oh yes, I, um, and some of my classmates from Philadelphia went to work for Ryan Pay in New York City. And uh, we, had, we had these incredible discussions. They were working on a project in Honolulu. And what they were talking about in the office was, well, let's hurry up and get this project out of the office. It's in Honolulu. Nobody is ever going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, these and were the uh, like the fresh right. post-statehood days, uh, right, where it was still exotic and far away. Yeah, and, and it was the beginning of I.M. Page development of the precast mm -hmm. concrete facades. Mm -hmm. you know. and amazing. And let's go to the next slide, which shows the model a little bit more from the side, where I find it intriguing that you were actually paying as much attention to the detail of the massing of the neighboring building as much as to your building. Mm -hmm. So it's way different than sort of the very narcissist sort of me, me, me uh, sort of attitude that we have so often these days. It's more about the others, the others, and how do I basically fit in? I, no, I but it's also very important that the, you know what you build is in relationship to other structures. And, mm -hmm. you know, that has to work as well. Mm -hmm. And let's have one more view of that beautiful model here. Next uh, image here. 
I also want to recognize how you built that topo model, that topography. So you went through the effort in showing the mountains, sure. right? Which is and the mountain was a very important part of the composition. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as we'll see probably a little later, uh, the, the work of art was uh, generated, I think, by the fact that the mountain comes down and uh, well, we'll discuss that a little and bit. And if you want to, we can discuss it now because we bring up the next image and there it shows. Sure. Uh, um, the, the work of art was originally conceived of uh, as by the State Fund, Hawaii State Foundation on the Culture and the Arts, which is 1% of the construction value. And I spoke to the director at that time, Alfred Price, and then I suggested that instead of a, a piece, a sculptural piece, it'd be nice to have something which would relate more to the environment, such as the garden. Uh, a couple of months later, I get a call from Mr. Price, and he said, uh, Selma Noguchi is coming to town, and we, we set up meetings for you to discuss with him what the work should be. And that's precisely what Mr. Noguchi did. Uh, he, he, well, we built this model for him, actually, but, but uh, he wanted to recall why he ridge in the back coming down to, to these mounds of rock and, uh, you know, becoming a, a rock garden, very much in the Japanese kind of tradition. And that, it was really an incredible experience. Um, unfortunately, because of the discussions between the State Department and the University of Hawaii regarding money, it was never executed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a shame. Uh, and let's, let's go to the next slide. I mean, nevertheless, again, I mean, one could say, one could always add it, right? Yes, yes, you know? um, of course. And because you set the stage for it, as we can see, the sort of setback of the building is basically giving space right, right. To, for that. It was also on axis with the road, as one exactly. of the earlier um, joint shows. Exactly, yeah. And, and talking sort of value engineering, let's go to the next page here, something that Detective DeSoto and Martin were already identifying when we saw the uh, working model in your office and then comparing it to, uh, this is actually a picture, I believe, from the Kobayashi book, uh, Building a Rainbow, uh, that, we, that we took from there. So the comparison you can see is something more rich on the right side at the mm -hmm. model and something sort of missing on the left side, which is some of the Brie Soleil's, right? Yeah, well, we were very much concerned about the environment, except in those days it was not called sustainability, it was called ecology. Mm -hmm. and we should call it like that again. Right, please. and the mm -hmm. Brie Soleil was certainly part of it, uh, you know, protecting all of the, the fenestration mm -hmm. from direct sunlight, mm -hmm. which is now, you know, just people do it naturally, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and in, in the kind person you are, you were defending the client when I was starting to accuse the client of having been a bad client. He said, no, actually, the client was good, the university, but the construction manager was in charge. Yeah, the construction manager was in charge of building, the, bringing the building in for his budgeted costs. And, and, and there course, was an ar irony to that, right? At sure, the and the, you know, you could certainly take off the bridge solar and save a lot of money. Well, they, they saved a lot of money. Uh, they saved too much money. The, the, the cost of the building came in under the budget. <laughs> like a million, did you say? Something like that. You know, so I think uh, we should make a claim to bring the louvers see, back. Yeah, well, I think right. we should try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's move on to the next uh, page and also to the next project because this is getting us into the 80s, um, which you know many of us, if we think about the other arts of music and and, and, you know, even like car, and this is probably the low point in American car manufacturing in many ways, where cars were not made to last anymore. Everything was about, mm -hmm. you know, the look and, you know, put together cheaply. Mm -hmm. The Reagan era, never mind as well. So, I mean, in, in, and you were probably very remarkably, when DeSoto went out there for his field work and in gathering information about the show, this project of yours, mm -hmm. without us, shame on us knowing who did it and what it is, he immediately said, wow, I like this building, and I agree. Mm -hmm. and, lay, and then we did our research and found mm -hmm. out it's your project. So tell us about what project it is, and again, your, your thoughts behind. Well, um, again, our concern was how our project relates to other existing buildings around the site. And in the upper corner is a biomedical building, and the lower 
corner or two high rises that were designed and uh, or, or, or the decision was not to compete with those mm -hmm. two taller buildings. Uh, uh, this is a, this was a laboratory building. Um, you know, wonderful client, and, and the, 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 the thinking here was to, to, to separate the office space, which is quite different from activities in the laboratory spaces. Uh, the courtyard serves as a function of being the facade for the offices, and all the offices are in the inner ring of the courtyard. Mm -hmm. The laboratories are on the outer ring, mm -hmm. which does not require light or air, or any of that kind of uh, requirement. Very clever. And we go to the next page, we can see this. And I want to just say to the emerging generation, this is the old school, this is the ink mm -hmm. on, on vellum. And yeah. then you did these sort of, I remember because we worked like that as well, so I'm part of that generation. Our right. kids don't know this anymore. Everything comes out of the machine, mm -hmm. right, instantly. But these are, and then also the, the shadow lines are, are beautifully inked on. So it really sort of gives us a sense of the plasticity of, of the building, right? Yeah, it's also V-Log printing, which they don't do anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so go, go to the plan, the next page here, which um, again. Yeah, uh, the, the, the plan shows the offices fronting the courtyard, so mm -hmm. to speak, with the laboratories being in the mm -hmm. back. And, uh, it, it, you know, it worked out very well. Uh, it still does, I think, yeah. work out very well. Absolutely. And next page is just the, the top floor. Again, again the same upper thing. Story. And we no. see on the very top right, we see this sort of interesting in the very rectangularity of the whole configuration, we see this one sort of breaking out of that rural, sort of more organic, kind of curvy line. And if we go to the next page, we can see how that, what that actually is then in, in reality, right? And the reason for that was to somehow try to acknowledge the fact that this is next to biomedical buildings, you know, and opening up that vista as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I would say, you know, while it is truly a very sort of a zeitgeisty gesture, I'm thinking of New York mm -hmm. Five and Richard Meyer mm -hmm. and Gwathmi and Siegel in their, you know, good heydays. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm seeing that by, at the same time, some of their buildings, you know, are so dated that, you know, you clearly think about the 80s like, okay. But here, mm -hmm. not so much the case. So I've, I think you really walk that fine line of both uh, sort of zeitgeisty and being, being timeless. Um, move to the next uh, image here. Um, and, and again, vegetation plays a big role. And as you were saying, Mayumi, that your father is often using and allowing, in fact, inviting vegetation, right? Yes, he loves trees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but on the other hand, there's this idea of maintenance, and that's equally as important as having good landscaping. Certainly, you know, yeah. Landscaping must be maintained. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, next, is, is, is some yeah, ways to go on that. notorious in right. not wanting to do right, maintenance. Right, right. Yeah, ne next slide to that regard here. This is a picture you provided from when the vegetation was small. Mm -hmm. and, and you can see that the building is doing a job because the glass facade, the fenestration, is pushed back. So you can see the you know, structure doing right. a job in shading, right? Right, right, right. And, and, but then on the next page is, uh, is a picture I took, which I love it jungly because I come from Germany where you, <laughs> you know, studied and worked and we were just talking in, in Switzerland mm -hmm. and in, in France and you said what, we're going to talk English or, or maybe Swiss German or, you know, all the languages that you picked up on your, on your way. And, Sort of, you know, obviously here now, um, DeSoto having, after done all the research about the typologies on campus, he identified courtyards as a very good theme that in fact at that time in the 80s, the university has given up on because most of these horrible hermetic buildings don't do this anymore. So you were keeping up that sort of genetic code yeah, well, of the courtyard. Well, well what has also happened during the, during the time is that the landscape grew, which is very natural. Mm -hmm. and it, still, mm -hmm. it still works as a courtyard, which yeah. is very important. Yeah, no, it absolutely does. You see the students still, still sitting. Exactly, exactly, you know? yeah. And uh, what universities then do, and over time, maybe not so good anymore, the next picture here, this is a picture I did of what they did to your building after the <laughs> fact, right? 
and maybe trying, you know, with best intentions, uh, but again, not of the originality anymore uh, that, 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 that you handwriting sort of brought. And to expand on that, we have the third project, which is the closest to me because it's my workplace, or at least it's supposed to be. And in fact, I basically boycott to be in that building that <laughs> I'm, I'm already saying you didn't design, but we mm -hmm. get to that because we bring in the next picture here and this is what I would have loved and, and could have worked in, in a very tropical, easy breezy, uh, uh, single loaded corridor, aerated through mult multiplicity of courtyard building, right, that you designed for me and my colleagues, right? Yeah, this was the original scheme for the School of Architecture, and it was designed as to be part of the quadrangle rather than to dominate the quadrangle. Um, to, to allow the quadrangle to be important as it should be. Uh, you know, as you say, there are spaces in between the buildings which relate to whatever the functions are. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, that was, that was the intent. It was, and how that was played out on a, on a larger scale, we see at the next page here, which is the, the site plan. And you rebel, you, you were resisting the uh, classicist order of, the, of, the, of the, the quarter and the quadrant here and basically moving the building out of it and making it in line with uh, George Hall here. And that way opening up the quad to the public, to university. Yeah, Avenue. that's right. And to try to re repeat what was done prior to, 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 well, for example, the neoclassic kind of language uh, was somewhat archaic, but um, well, that's why we did what we did well, <laughs> initially in the first scheme. And, and as we talk, it's interesting because he said, and this is almost ironic, because he said, you know, I went to Berlin, I studied Schinkel, yes. right? And so, but I think I allowed myself to say you were working in the notion of Schinkel, because if Schinkel would have come to Hawaii in the early <laughs> 90s, yeah to the tropics, he would have done what you did. Mm -hmm. But what in fact then you were forced to do was the shinkle who didn't move on, right? That's right. The shinkle who got stuck in, in a time that is was... outdated, right? Because the campus architect at that time was shooting three bullets at your design and the three bullets were if you don't remember them, I no, do. No, 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 the three b bullets were the, 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 the language should be neoclassic. The building should be two stories in height with parking below. And, so then, and then classicist in style and, yes, then, yes. and then central into the quad. Right? That's right, that's so right. So these were the three bullets. Right. And mm -hmm. when um, you were initially sort of talking to us about this on a side note when you gave a talk story at Docomomo, and uh, after that, I insisted, and thanks to your daughter, who was then uh, basically not giving up on making you dig out the proof of evidence, <laughs> not only of what the building originally was intended to be, but then also how hard you fought to keep as many of these original ideas. And from these many drawings, we're just going to share one of the iterations, as we call that. So if you can get the next image here which was where you basically had to give in and move it down, but you were keeping sort of its democratic gesture of being open versus yeah, the prison, we, which it would yeah, have to be. We tried to keep a courtyard, mm -hmm. and, you know, for all kinds of reasons. It, it, it was another face of the university to the public. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it allowed the School of Architecture to have its own exterior kind of space. Mm -hmm. orientation. Absolutely. Which I thought was very important at the time. It, it, mm -hmm. it would have been, I can tell you, on a daily basis. Yes. Because so trapped <laughs> and so hermetic and so introverted, we don't have a face. People right. say, where is right. your building? Yeah. Right. And we say, well, it's where the parking is. I yes. mean, that's the face <laughs> of the building. And that was by programming mm -hmm. of a client who at that time, you know, had turned into sort of being stuck in some formalism. Mm -hmm and mm -hmm. wasn't as progressive and innovating and trusting an architect who had proven mm -hmm. himself, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. twice mm -hmm. to be capable of doing these things. So the next picture here, 
um, is again showing in, in this sort of beautiful hand drawing style how um, again you know you would have I mean often it's a compromise right between different no. interests so mm -hmm. the client here you know wanting the quadrant to be completed in the original way and you did that but at the same time you insisted to be open to give the school a face that is an open phase yes. where the offices and the classrooms mm -hmm. speaking to the public and the sort of amphitheater sort of stepping down. So I, I commend you for that. And again, mm. just for the records, there are many more iterations where you were not giving up. You were staying a rebel and saying, okay, I'm not gonna, you know, and at the end you had to, but again, I'm saying this is, this is not, I mean, obviously there is some stamp on the drawings that unfortunately has your name, but I'm saying, and with a show we tell everyone it's not your building, we have now shown what your building would have been, and it would have been just another beautiful building <laughs> that's exotic and tropic and totally appropriate. So whoever designed this here, the campus architect, who is also now the CEO of one of the largest firms here on the island, and designed by committee as well, because it was just one person. And whenever you design something by committee, I have that experience too, it just goes wrong. Mm -hmm. So um, that, we have a tradition here, if you go to the next page, to conclude on a positive note. And um, while we were sort of critical about the existing building uh, we have, and then sort of being very sentimental about what it could have been, go to the final page here, please is that um, our tropical tutor, Bill Chapman, who has been a friend for a while and now is our interim dean, uh, pretty much has thrown out something that's also within the tradition <laughs> of campus because this is uh, the old engineering building. And the old engineering building was overgrown with vines. So he basically <laughs> suggested to do the same with the current school of architecture to basically dematerialize it with foliage. And that way, sort of bringing back your idea to just, you know, you have to go over a bump, but the sort of the lawn or the meadow, you know, the quad mm -hmm. is sort of, is sort of continuing and you just dissolve that sort of tragic sort of neoclassical mock-off. So there's, there's always some hope. And another hope is that um, we cannot not talk about your recent engagement in uh, academic uh, architecture which is the University of Hawaii again, but at West Oahu. So we would love to have you come back, talk about that. And that has to be um, when I will be half around the world, because this is gonna be my last show for eight months that I'm able to be here, but I will not be gone. Physically, mm -hmm. I will be, but every other week, I will continue with DeSoto Brown. And I don't know if DeSoto is already here, I, I see him. Rob, can you signalize him that he's supposed to walk into the show, please? Mm -hmm. And so we're going to continue uh, Human Humane Architecture every other week. And uh, Human Humane Architecture is, if you don't, haven't recognized yet, it's about mainly the post um, uh, contact uh, culture and construction evolution. And please, DeSoto here, come and join us. There he is. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Good Hello. to have Hello. you. So I'm just Hello. announcing what we're going into. We keep running strong every other week, Human Humane Architecture. That's correct. About the post-contact culture construction evolution. Correct. But at the same time, um, about that history, that's about documenting and conserving yes. that, and we need to do that too. So you're also going to be here with us in another capacity because right. every other week you will coordinate and synchronize our Docomomo board. Yes, sir. That is absolutely Who is right. going to do the one uh, unique in the United States of all chapters. We're going to have an own show, our own Docomomo chapter Hawaii show and you're orchestrating them, right? And I, so I will be a co-host probably for many of those shows. Mm -hmm. And then you and I will be doing shows. You'll be remote mm -hmm. from Germany. Mm -hmm. I will be here in Honolulu, and we'll have various guests on the show. Yeah, and we will. We just agreed that we will have them back, Excellent. you with them, and Excellent. we're going to talk about Harris, Hawaii, and Wonderful. this time at uh, West Oahu. So we okay. look forward to that. Okay, that's good. And until then, uh, stay all happy and healthy, and as joyful as John and Mayumi, and. Uh, <laughs> 
along that side also a happy holidays because next week it's already going to be the Soto. And that's going to be a reckless show because I will be in transit Absolutely. and cannot. And I think it's going to be your brutalist it's tropics. Brutalism uh -huh. picks. There we it's go. My brutalist picks. There you go. Yeah. Uh huh. All right. See you all then. Bye bye. Happy holidays.